You see, there's this preconceived notion, then, that a smaller water footprint is better than a larger one. And there's no inherent reason why that would necessarily be the case. One can think of many situations in which a larger water footprint might be perfectly good, might even be better than a smaller water footprint. If water footprints simply describe the amount of water used in a production process, then there are situations and there are livelihoods and households and industries that require more water, actually, where we need to see a, a larger water allocation or wa more water made available. For example, in a country such as Sri Lanka, which gets plenty of rainfall and has abundant water resources, at least in some regions of the country, one wouldn't care very much about the water footprint of bananas or the water footprints of coconuts. In fact, many of us who live and work in Sri Lanka are quite happy that we have lots of banana plants and coconut trees using a lot of this water that falls here because excess water can cause more damage than water shortages in some portions of Colombo. What I would propose is that we don't implement a water footprint standard on a firm in that situation. Rather, the government, the public who holds the water in public trust, needs to determine how much water would we allocate or would we sell to the firm in that particular operation, given these other demands on the water resource. That water allocation, then, simply needs to be enforced, and the firm needs to simply know this is all the water I am able to use in this situation. Then the firm can decide what's the best way to use that water. What's the most value I can generate from that water, which now for me is limiting. That's a very different policy decision than telling the firm, we think the water footprint for glass should be so many cubic meters of water per ton of glass produced and please comply. One gets a very different dynamic moving with that sort of policy prescription versus one in which we simply communicate the scarcity of water resources to those firms that are perhaps abusing water and then enforcing the allocations that come with that and perhaps using pricing as a communication of scarcity as well. I think that's a good example where a water footprint generated policy measure could actually be more complicated and more confusing and much less productive than one which addresses the problem head on, which is the allocation of water in a very scarce situation. India at the moment is codifying possibly some language regarding water footprints. But I think perhaps as a result of some discussion on water footprints in the recent India Water Week, which was convened in New Delhi, there might be some new thinking now about whether or not water footprinting is really the best way to go. There may be some thinking that water footprinting might mislead some people into thinking we're making progress along a policy front when that's really not the case. One can imagine that India would be really hard pressed to develop, to implement, and to enforce a large program of water footprints across a vast array of products and goods and services in the country. One can only imagine the size of the spreadsheets one would need to create to have water footprints for all of these products. Just as soon as the water footprints are calculated, technology can change and then the water footprints are out of date all over again. So I think there are some very smart people in India who are indeed thinking now about alternative approaches. It may take some time before alternative approaches work their way through into a policy setting. But I think there are some very good and smart people thinking about how we might do better by allocating water, by communicating scarcity through water allocations and prices in ways that enable India to communicate scarcity to motivate wise use without necessarily imposing excessive costs in all situations. There are some creative, not so innovative, but creative policy measures such as increasing block rate prices by which India could communicate scarcity by rising the price on water in blocks that represent excessive use while still maintaining relatively low prices for blocks of water in a low use range. And I think these will be considered in India. Some of them are in place already in the energy sector, and I think there'll be times when some of these prices also are implemented in, in the agricultural and in the water sector as well. So I'm very inspired by recent discussions I've had in India, albeit my discussions have been very small and only with a few people, but I'm very encouraged that 
it's possible that India might step back a little bit from the water footprint approach and consider something more appropriate, more innovative, and likely to be much more successful in improving water management.